safety is a very important issue that we have in carting, both at Badger and on a, on a national level. A couple of the items that are mandatory, one is the neck ring that must be used while you're both practicing and racing, helps hold the your head in position. Also, it's necessary to have gloves of some kind, and these would be abrasion resistant gloves. One of the most important safety pieces that we have is the helmet. Currently, we need a Snell 2000 rated helmet. And this is, uh, you can find the rating sticker is inside the helmet. It's underneath, inside the liner. It is recommended that you buy a new helmet. Reason being is we can get all kinds of things on the internet, eBay, whatever, but you don't know the condition of the helmet beforehand and it is such an important part of safety equipment. Also, when it comes to uh, apparel, the rule is or the recommendation is that you have an abrasive, abrasive resistant uh, driving apparel. It can be a suit and those cannot be made out of Nomex. Uh, leather jackets work, thick jeans work, and uh, this is again in, uh, in the line of safety. Also, you must wear socks. And it is recommended that you wear a high top shoe. It doesn't necessarily have to be a racing shoe, but those do work well. Some of the things we want to show you is when you're going out looking for a cart, and in this case, I'll be showing you what to look for on a used cart. Um, we'll go over the basic things there, and we'll go over some of the aspects of our safety tech. When you're looking at a used cart, look it over real well. Most of them will have body work on. This one doesn't so that you can uh, see clearly all the frame rails we're looking to and stuff. But you want to look down the length of the frame rails here. You want to look that they're relatively straight and not bent. You want to look for welds that are not factory welds. Having a weld on a cart isn't necessarily mean it's not usable. Carts do get damaged at times or to, do break. If it's a good weld and it's a strong weld, it'll be absolutely fine, no problem with any of it. You're going to want to look for welds, usually in the areas where the crossbars come into the main frame. Look and see if there's any cracks or damage there. Like I said, you want to look to make sure that the main frame rails are straight and not bent. One of the first things you'll probably want to do, sometimes um, you'll have a seller who has scales available. You can check to see if it's straight on scales. Um, if you go to a swap meet, we have a swap meet every year, don't be afraid to ask other people's opinions. Ask experienced carters to look at it for you, tell you what they think. One of the things you need to know about when you're shopping for car chassis is the different types we have. At Badger, which is considered a sprint track, we have two classes of tires. HPV, tag, and shifters will run a sticky tire. Juniors, animals, Yamaha cans will run a much harder tire. You need the chassis that you're going to buy to work with the tires you're going to run. Tube diameters and the shape of the chassis will generally determine which is right for you. Some of the things to look for on chassis like this, you can see there's double frame rails here and here. This is a stiffer chassis meant to work with a softer tire. If you're looking at one of the kids' classes or you're looking at one of the um, can or four cycle classes, the simpler, cheaper chassis are what works best. While we're looking at this cart, I want to go into a little bit about safety tech. Before you're allowed on the track at Badger, you're going to have to go through safety tech. This happens Sunday mornings before every race. Any bolt having to do with steering or brakes must be safety key. These are these little clips that go through holes in the end of the bolt. All bolts attaching anything here 
needs to have safety clips on. The brakes and the brakes in the back of the car here, again, must be safety clipped or safety wired. You can see the safety wire here. Um, there's also requirements, and you should have a copy of Badger's rule book. There are specs for the bumpers, there are specs for the sidebars. Everything has to meet current WKA safety standards. Most carts you find will all meet those standards, but when you're looking at a cart, just take a moment, look it over, make sure that everything is there. When you're looking for your first cart, at Badger we do sprint racing only. There's other types of karting out there. There's enduro carts, which are generally longer and narrower than these. Those are used on big tracks like Road America, Daytona, Charlotte, Mid-Ohio. There's also oval racing, which happens on both asphalt and dirt. Those carts generally have the seat and the steering wheel offset to one side. It's, it's fairly easy to see the difference. Make sure what you're looking for is designed for the class you want to run. At Badger, our class is run on two different types of tires. We've got hard tires for the juniors, the four cycle classes, the Yamaha cam classes, and the Yamaha pipe classes. Shifters, HPVs, and tags run a softer set of tires. The cart you use has to be designed to work in the type of racing that you will do. That there's different levels that you can get into this on. I want to show you some of the things we use and how they benefit you. You're going to want to have a stopwatch. Stopwatches can range from the $2 one you buy at Walmart to some pretty fancy ones. These here will time every lap. This one here will do at least four cars every lap. So you can time your competitors, see where you fall into the game next to them. This is information you're going to want to know to judge how you're progressing. A big part of our sport has been, over the last several years, changing a lot. You are going to need, at the minimum, a simple tack and temp gauge. That will tell you the RPM range and the cylinder head or exhaust gas temperature of your motor while you're out there racing. There's been a lot of advances over the last few years. A lot of gauges nowadays will also time your cart off a beacon mounted on the track. You come back in and it will play back all your lap times and give you the RPM and temperature range while you are out there. We also have at the higher end of the scale full-blown data acquisition systems just like you'd find on a NASCAR or IndyCar. This unit here, when you go out and do your sessions, it'll record everything that happens. You come back to your trailer you plug it into a computer, a laptop or a stationary computer. It will draw a map of the track, the lines exactly as you drove them. It will allow you to look at through graphs, bar graphs, anything you want, all the information. It also will tell you things like lateral g-forces so that when you make changes to your chassis, you can zero in on certain corners and see exactly what changed the difference that your change just made in your lap time. One of the things I want you to think about, as I said in the engine section, you don't always have to go for the high dollar stuff. What you need to think carefully is where you spend your money and what you spend it on. Certain tools like good gauges, a good stopwatch, this is how you learn. This is going to pull you through your learning curve so much faster because you have the available information. It's going to tell you and show you everything that happened out there. In my mind, this is one area where you should look and spend your money wisely. Go for the best stuff you can afford.
here you're going to see some of the different types of motors we use. This one here is a kid cart motor. That's used for a five through eight year old group. It's raised completely stock as it is. It's limited to a little over a horsepower and they go about 22 miles an hour. This is a Yamaha motor, KT100. It's one of several types of two cycle motors we have. We also have HPVs, tags, and shifters. This motor can be used with either a can type exhaust or a pipe type exhaust, and it's the most popular of the two cycle motors out there. This is a Briggs and Stratton Animal. This is the basis for our four cycle classes to use out there. One of the things I want you to understand when you're out shopping for parts, most of these motors can either run stock or blueprinted. Blueprinting is something you're going to want to look into, but only when you're really at the level that you need it. It's, it, it's entirely possible for people to come out to our track, and I recommend to people, if you're buying a new motor, start racing with a stock motor. It doesn't need to be totally blueprinted. You don't need to stick a lot of money in it. Most of your learning is going to be through driving and chassis setup. When it does come time that you're ready to move up and have it blueprinted, by then your motor's well seasoned. It can take all the boring and decking and you'll be ready to move to that level at that time. There's often many different parts that are available for you. These are examples of four cycle clutches. Price range runs from under $100 to over $300. Again, as in the case with the motors, you don't always need the best and most expensive. The cheaper lines of clutches are designed to take the abuse that as a beginner you're going to give them. You can often get by with the hundred dollar piece, use it through your learning curve, and again when you're ready, then you can move up to the really high dollar stuff that will give you that absolute last tenth or two on the track. As you can see by this, this is a pretty professional level of racing. It's every bit as professional as anything else out there. We're in a regular go-kart shop today. You can see around us there's a lot of motors that be being built. There's a lot of work done to them. Karting is one of those sports where you can enter this for under two grand or you can spend a lot more than that. One of the things that keeps it fair and equal, regardless of what you spend,